mountains of Mendocino County, about 10 miles east of Willits. This is the home of a place called the Milo Foundation Sanctuary. If there's a doggy heaven on earth, this looks like it could be it. Hills for running, creeks for splashing, and fellow animals and people for playing. We touch down at the Willits Airport with a special cargo. She is ready to go. This is Layla, a high energy dog who needs a lot of room to roam. Layla is a character. I mean, she came from Merced, uh, from the shelter there, was facing euthanasia. And she's just a full throttle, bursting at the seams, energetic girl. The 283-acre Milo Foundation Sanctuary has plenty of space. Huh? Lynn Tingle meets us at the airport to pick up Layla. She founded the Milo Foundation in 1994. Yeah, we had our 25th anniversary last year and um, we've rescued more than 35,000 animals and found them homes. Layla gets quite the welcome as we arrive at the sanctuary. This Australian cattle dog shepherd mix has been here before. She's come back because she still hasn't found the right family to take her in. She will challenge you all the time. Um, you know, she's just active, agile, and fun-loving and really wants to have adventures in her life. <laughs> this is not strictly a dog sanctuary. We pass by a couple of other Milo residents. Hey! You have some pretty big tusks there. They're so cute! <laughs> Go you. ahead, Carol. We head to the stables that are being used as a kennel and find Phoebe, a playful little pit bull that is obsessed with her ball. You know, it's a challenge all the time, but it's also super rewarding. I mean, these animals that were going to be euthanized get every chance that they can to get adopted, and if they aren't adopted, they get to come here. And the thing about here is that the dogs can be dogs. They can be out with groups of dogs and playing and have space and be in a stress-free environment until we can get them a home so they're not sitting in a kennel. Our tour continues on an ATV as we explore the 280 acres covered by oak and pine trees and manzanita. Nash leads the way and Harvey takes up the rear. We end up at the wolf pen. Hey, Miss Last Words, honey. They won't bite. You go first. Okay. Mia there. Animals like these are often the victims of trendy movies and TV shows. Instead of Dalmatians or Chihuahuas, the new It dog is now a wolf hybrid, like the dogs that were seen in Game of Thrones. They're often abandoned once it's learned the reality of owning an exotic pet is far removed from the fantasy on the screen. That is where Lynn steps in. I do it because I love it. I mean, otherwise, you know, I'd really be a crazy person if I was doing this. <laughs> we continue through the rolling hills and past the neighbor's marijuana farm and circle back to the cluster of buildings that make up the heart of the sanctuary. This is also where we find a colony of cats. It's dinner time. For the dogs and the cats that fail for some reason in their home or just aren't able to do the urban environment or, you know, have too much energy or they're afraid of strangers, they come here to the Milo Sanctuary. We stop and visit the horses and two of the sweetest donkeys you'll ever find. The horses here were all rescued from a uh, kill lot in Texas where basically the kill buyers go to uh, horse auctions, livestock auctions, and they uh, buy them all, usually pretty cheap, but they're competitive and they will outbid even people that want to, um, you know, Save them. adopt, yeah. Right. Uh, they all cost us like $1,500 each. Wow. And then you have to um, quarantine them for a couple of weeks and then truck them out. So it's hugely expensive to rescue these guys that way, you know, and it's right. just wrong. The whole setup for... It's a big scam. It's a big scam. Wow. It's a huge scam and it's a big problem because there has to be some kind of answer for what do you do with a horse that you don't want anymore. There are five workers here supporting this nonprofit. Milo relies on donations to do its work. The coronavirus pandemic has altered life here as well. There have been fewer rescues arriving because more people have been working from home, keeping their animals company. The thing that's the positive 
is that more people are looking to adopt. So we've had a lot of adoptions from the sanctuary, a lot of adoptions at our adoption center, which is, you know, being done by appointment. And um, so we've cleared out most of our, you know, readily adoptable animals from here at the Milo Sanctuary, which is wonderful. It's because people are just looking and they're looking deeper and harder than ever before to find an animal to adopt because it's, it's, it's a hard time right now. It's almost time to go, but we're going to take another dog back with us. You are going to take back Amos, who is a happy, easygoing, bent leg, funny old guy. Uh, his person died. We now have a foster home set up for him so he can go down to the Bay Area and get some love and attention and either hopefully maybe the foster will adopt. I mean, that's a, a possibility and there's someone else interested. So we're just going to see if we can get him. Okay. Hey, Amos, come on. Good boy. Good boy. There you go. <laughs> we say goodbye to Lynn, but we will be back. You know, we're hanging in there. We plan to be here for many decades to come.